Okay, Second Kings ten. Second Kings chapter ten. Second Kings chapter ten. Let's look down at verse fifteen. In 2 Kings 10, verse 15, the Bible reads, And when he was departed thence, he lighted on Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, coming to meet him, and he saluted him, and said unto him, Is thine heart right, as my heart is with thy heart? And Jehonadab answered, It is. If it be, give me thine hand. And he gave him his hand, and he took him up into the chariot, and he said, Come with me, and see my zeal for the Lord. So they made him ride in his chariot. Now, the title of my sermon tonight is A Zeal for Discipleship. A Zeal for Discipleship. One of my favorite characters in the Bible is Jehu. I love Jehu. Uh, And what I want to point out about Jehu, I mean, he was known for some things. The Bible says he drove furiously. You know, I looked up that word furiously. It's not like he had road rage. It just means he was intense. He had a lot of energy. That's what that word means when you say furiously. I want to be known for... Uh, having a zeal. I want to be like Jehu. Now, the title of my sermon is is A Zeal for Discipleship, not A Zeal for Soul Winning. Discipleship isn't soul winning, and soul winning isn't discipleship. What they say to us is, hey, 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 you guys are doing salesman tactics. You need to disciple them. You need to talk to people for a year. That's baloney. I don't believe in that. The Bible doesn't subscribe to that. The Bible says, he that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again, bringing his sheaves with him. I don't believe in lifestyle evangelism. I don't believe in this thing where you just, just kind of like show you're a good person. Eventually they just come and fall in love with Jesus Christ and believe on him later. But I do believe discipleship is something we should have as much zeal for as we do soul winning. Now, uh, in Psalm uh, 69 verse 9, it says, For the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. I don't know about you, but I want to be eat up with it. I mean, I want this thing. I was just talking to Norm Diamante today. And if you guys ever gone soul winning with him, you'll know that guy drives furiously. I mean, no sooner do I knock on the door. And I look behind to, to say something to Norm, and he's at the next door. He's just got a zeal for soul winning. He's got a lot of energy. He's like, listen, I want to get people saved, and I want to go get them. I want to have that same zeal. Take that, and that's good, and we ought to have that. But I want to see that fruit remain, and I want to see, I want to see us get just as zealous as that 478 people since the beginning of this year turning into, let's go get them. Let's bring them in. Let's make more disciples. I want to be eaten up with the things of God. Acts 5.42, it says, And daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not, watch this, to teach and preach Jesus Christ. There's more than just preaching Jesus. And we do that and we ought to. But we ought to teach Jesus. There's more than just the gospel. We need to teach unto them the whole counsel of God, the whole thing. And if we only fulfill the Great Commission, we're only doing half the work. What about the rest of the half? Listen, I'm not preaching you guys about being zealous soul winners because I don't know anybody in this church who isn't a zealous soul winner. But one thing I've purposed at the beginning of this year is I want to be zealous for discipleship. I want to see them come to church. I want to compel them and beg them to read their Bible. I want to leave them with preaching CDs. I want to follow up, maybe take them to lunch, and make it my own personal responsibility to train them and make them soul winners. In that, in that uh, let's, Jehu said, come with me and see my zeal for the Lord. He didn't say, listen, go have zeal for the Lord yourself. Hey, listen, I hope it goes well with you. I'm glad you got saved. See you later. If I don't see you in church, I'll see you in heaven. He said, hey. Come with me. Let me show you my excitement and my intensity for the Lord. The Bible says in Matthew 28 and 19, it says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Watch this. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. Out of this, just this passage, this is what we should teach them. This is what we should disciple them. Number one. If you don't get them wet, they won't stick. I've just noticed that. about, And I'm not saying, baptism has nothing to do with salvation, okay? A thief on the cross wasn't baptized. We all understand that. However, baptism is the first step of obedience. I want to see them baptized. We ought to have a zeal to want to see them get baptized. That's an exciting thing. If you don't get them wet, they won't stick. Number two, if they don't have the right Bible, they can't hear the shepherd. 
Yeah. I don't want them reading the New World Translation or the NIV or any of that stuff. I want them to hear the voice of the shepherd. How are they going to grow without him? I want to have a zeal for having the right Bible in their hand. Yes, sir. Right. If they don't go to the right church, they'll never observe all things. You're right. I don't know about you, but these liberal fund centers, they're not going to learn about the things of God at Chuck E. Cheese Church. Come on now. We preach the whole counsel of God. That's one of the best parts about this church. I want them to get into a church where they're going to learn the right doctrine. That verse says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. I don't know about you, but most churches don't teach people to observe all the commandments. Because the last one was to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And that's the one, the great commission has become the great omission. And that's not what they're doing. So I want to have a zeal for uh, having them get to the right church. If you don't teach them to sow, they won't reproduce. That just goes without saying. You don't yeah. teach someone to sow, it won't reproduce. It was our final commandment. And just like Jehu, I want to say, hey, come with me. Yeah. What's wrong with saying, hey, you guys doing anything right now? Let's go to the next door with me. I mean, having that much zeal and intensity to make them a soul winner that day. Me and Jake heard um, people giving uh, a testimony. I forgot who gave this. Maybe Logan Robertson, where he took the soul winner. And that guy, the same day he got saved, he became a soul winner. Yeah. Okay. What's wrong with that? He's just going to be a silent partner. Have him watch you how to do it. In conclusion, once you get them saved, here, here's what I'd like to do. And something I want to be diligent about. I don't always do it and I fall short, but I want to do it. And I want to make sure that this year I focus big. I'm not just getting them saved, but discipling them. The first thing I want to do is I want to make sure they read their Bible. They know where to go, that they have a Bible. I want to have them listen to preaching and YouTube. A lot of us are here because of YouTube. You know, maybe we're in uh, different churches. Excuse me, different churches. Uh, Jay came from a Pentecostal church and heard once saved, always saved. It had an impact on their life. I want to make sure they got the right preaching yeah. in their life. And then I want to add to that. I'm going to send them a packet, but I'm not just going to fill their name on it, send it to them. But like Pastor Romero said, I'm going to call them Saturday and say, Come with me. See my zeal for the Lord. You sit with me. You be my guest. Hey, and you guys don't have to do this, but this is something I do. Let me take you to lunch. Let me teach you. Let me open up the Bible. And let me, let, let me show you the next step. What next? Now that you're saved, what about what to do next? The Bible says to compel them to come in. I don't want to be that Christian who just, well, they, you know, they got saved and it doesn't look like they'll ever read their Bible. We walk away and laugh it off and go to the next house. I want to do some begging. I want to do some compelling. Hey, what about the next step? And once they're saved, I thank God they're saved, but I want to see them become a soul winner. Yeah. I want to see them become an independent fundamental Baptist. That's good. And the only one that's going to teach them is the one that got them saved. Yeah. Right. If you're not going to do it, who's going to do it? Out of 478 people, and listen, I, I know that, that uh, most of them are going to stay home. Most of them are going to uh, feed the flesh, and they're not going to give way to the Spirit. They're not going to walk in the Spirit. I get that. That's not what I'm saying. But I have a heartbeat for the 478. I really want to see those guys come in and get in to make more of us. I go out and do the same thing. Show them when they do come. I just I had some visitors and my heart skipped a beat. Literally, when Josh and Miranda came in, some people I got saved out soul winning, my heart was filled. And the, the thing I, I knew I had to do was to show them that they're the most important person in this room. I love Brother Brian, Brother Theo, Brother Jake. I love everybody in this church. But that day, you guys weren't important to me. They were important. Because those are the people, hey, they made the effort to come here. And you know what? They didn't want my free lunch. They came to church three times just because they he even told Brother Fan, uh, Miss Miranda, told Brother Fannin, I like it here. It's brutal. I said, I love that word. That's like he drove furiously. That's brutal. Man, I love that. I want to see them get in church and get baptized. Sit with them. Help them with their Bible. Encourage them. Answer their questions. Take them with you to lunch or soul winning. Let them know you're taking it upon yourself to train them. Don't leave it to Brother Fannin to disciple them. You disciple them. Be like Jehu. And lastly, let me finish with this. John 15, 16. It says, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. Watch this. And that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Guys, I don't know about you, but I want to see my fruit remain. Mm -hmm. I want to see them come and get in church, learn their Bible, and the same way I got excited about the things of God, I want to see those converts get excited about the things of God. I want to take them with me soul winning and watch them graduate from a silent partner to a talker. Amen. I want to see them fall in love with their King James Bible and defend it furiously. Right. I want to see them behind the pulpit yeah. preaching at men's preaching That's night. Good. And more than anything, I want to have a zeal 
for discipleship. Let's be zealous about making some disciples. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for the Word of God and Lord for the zeal that you put in all of our hearts to soul win. Now please give us that same zeal to be able to disciple the people we lead to you. God bless the next preacher and bless tonight, uh, men's preaching night in Christ's name I pray. Amen.